This video is going to cover making potassium carbonate, or K2CO3. Some information here, it's an inorganic compound. It's also known as potash, as are several things, and pearl ash. Its melting point is 618 degrees Celsius, or 1,144 degrees Fahrenheit. It's soluble in water, and in this solution, it is strongly alkaline. It's often used in prescriptions. A lot of things turn out to be used in prescriptions. Soap, making glass, and photography. The reaction uh, that we're going to perform here is going to involve potassium nitrate, KNO3, and carbon. And it's four potassium nitrate plus five carbon plus a lot of heat will yield you your potassium carbonate, two of them, three carbon dioxides, and two N2s, which is nitrogen gas. Stoichiometrically, it turns out that for every one gram of carbon, you need around six to seven grams of potassium nitrate. The problem here becomes that carbon, pure carbon, is hard to come by. And typically charcoal is used for this reaction, and I'm going to use so also. And typically charcoal comes from burning wood, which means there's other things mixed in with it. So getting exactly one gram of carbon uh, is difficult. You can burn sugar. People have done that. That also tends to work. But I'm going with charcoal. Because the amount of carbon is not exactly known when you're mixing it with the potassium nitrate, you want enough carbon to react with all the potassium nitrate. Bear with me here. If you don't have enough of carbon to react with your potassium nitrate, in the end solution, you're going to have leftover potassium nitrate, which will then get mixed up with your potassium carbonate. And it's a little bit difficult to separate those two. So in using excess carbon, which is really the thing to do and what I'm going to do, you'll have enough so that all of this gets reacted. And in the end, the carbon isn't going to get mixed up with this because carbon doesn't dissolve in water. And that's what we're eventually going to do. So we can separate the carbon and the potassium carbonate better. So excess carbon yields less potassium nitrate in the end result in a much purer product, which is what we're looking for. However, there is a small problem with using excess carbon, and that is that the heat we tend to use here to produce our potassium carbonate comes from burning the mixture because potassium nitrate is an oxidizer. So when you have excess carbon mixed with your potassium nitrate, it doesn't burn as well. So you have to really make sure that you fire this good with blowtorch to make sure all of the potassium nitrate is burned with this. Otherwise, the heat won't be enough to cause this reaction to go through because it's not lighting itself on fire. And that is typically how you know all of it's been burned through. So, yeah, there's nothing perfect here. Moving on to our materials. So what I've decided to use is 45 grams of potassium nitrate and an excess of charcoal, which is going to be 15 grams, which is quite a bit extra. So we'll need a metal container and we'll need a heat or fire source because of the excess carbon we're using. In our methods, it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to mix our two powders, potassium nitrate and carbon, put it in a metal can and fry it really good with a blowtorch, making sure from the bottom and the top that this is actually burned really well thoroughly. So we've actually produced our potassium carbonate already in here. Hopefully all the potassium nitrate is gone so that when we put it in the water and dissolve this mess, the potassium carbonate will dissolve in the water. Nothing else should, especially the excess carbon. Um, we know our water will have only potassium carbonate. So we want to go ahead and filter this to get rid of any of the chunks and other debris that we don't want. And we'll save our liquid here, which has our potassium carbonate. We're then going to put that in a beaker and heat it until we get rid of most of the water here and crystals start to form at the bottom. At that point, we'll cool it down and then we'll filter what's remaining here. And we should get our potassium carbonate stuck in this filter paper here. And because there is likely to be maybe a few other things in there, possibly I am going to wash it with acetone. This is not typically what's done, but I'm trying to get the purest product I can. Once that's done, we'll save it and dry it. Let's get to it and make our potassium carbonate. 45 grams of potassium nitrate pre-weighed. Approximately 15 grams of charcoal pre-weighed. Now that these two are weighed, I'm going to grind them in this coffee grinder here individually so that when we mix them together and burn them, we get the best reaction we can. Grinding the potassium nitrate. That's always going to happen. Grinding the charcoal. Because this is a black mess, if you open it too soon, I'm going to let it sit for about 5 or 10 minutes. It's been about 15 minutes, so I'm going to do this very carefully. Most of it settled down. So, ground charcoal is just messy. No way around it. Because 
because there's an excess of charcoal that we're putting in this reaction, I'm not too worried about little bits that fall out like you see there. I'm going to pour both of these into this can here as lightly as I can just to keep the dust down. Okay, good. Got our potassium nitrate now and charcoal. In one spot. I'm going to cover it with this, which is just aluminum foil, of course, and shake it good. Next step is to burn our potassium nitrate and charcoal mix. It's certainly not very pretty, but in there is our potassium carbonate. We need to now dissolve this in some distilled water. Dissolve this, we've got to first chip it out. My gosh, that's really hard. It's all in here, and I'm gonna fill this with just enough distilled water to cover all of that. This will start to dissolve the potassium carbonate, but um, if I can't get it just by sitting here, I'm going to put this into some kind of container to heat it instead of this plastic one. All right, that looks pretty good for now. Now it's truly hard to believe anything useful is going to come out of this. At this point, we want to get just the liquid, of course, because that's where the potassium carbonate's dissolved in. So I decanted out of here best I could into this one liter beaker, and I'll let this set and then decant it again, and then probably filter what's there. This majorly settled down overnight, so I am going to decant the top liquid there. There's still a little bits and pieces, I'm sure, so I'll still filter it, but that liquid contains our potassium carbonate, and that's what we want to boil down in the end. Okay, and because we use the excess carbon, you can see that this is mostly black or very dark because we wanted excess carbon, not excess potassium nitrate. To get the cleanest, purest liquid I can, I've double filter papered this. This is going to take a bit. I'll be back. I just finished my second filtration of this liquid which contains our potassium carbonate here and each time I used uh, double sheets of filter paper just to clean the solution as best as I could and then I took this thinking that maybe the highest concentration of potassium carbonate was down here you know mixed in this dirty stuff but all it did was make a mess so we're done with that and this is what we need to work with next and we're going to boil this down to get rid of some of the water. I'm transferring this to a 500 milliliter beaker here and I'm going to boil this down. I get this from fully boiling just because of the somewhat notorious unknown factors and when potassium carbonate actually breaks down. But we've lost about 200 milliliters so far. This was just about the 500 and it's just below the 350 right now. Interestingly, the first 100 milliliters evaporated and some dark, I don't know what it was, started to come out of solution. And so I hot filtered this at that point and this is what was remaining here and it continues to uh, diminish. When this was at about 250 milliliters, I let it cool down a bit to see if any crystals would really form, and they didn't. So I've continued to heat this up, and uh, we started with over 500. I think it was around 575, down to almost 100. And you can clearly see there are some crystals in the bottom there. Our solution is down to about 25 cc's, and if this is focus okay, we'll see the crystallization is starting to take place on the surface. There we go. So this is the end point for sure. I'm going to turn off the heat and put it in the fridge. Into the fridge you go. It's the next day, and let's see how our potassium carbonate's doing. 
Oh, wow. I can already see it. Check this out. There's a lot more crystals in there than were yesterday. There, it's focusing now. Um, I think the brown liquid will wash away when I, I uh, clean this with some uh, cold acetone. But first, it's got to be filtered. I'm going to scoop all this into this uh, filter here. This is what washed out of the uh, uh, potassium carbonate. It's kind of an oily substance. It's hard to see on camera here. But um, yeah, I'm not even sure what this is, but it did not mix with the acetone at the bottom of that flask. Just wanted to show you that in case anybody knows what this is. So I just got done washing this with acetone and with some 100% ethanol. Um, that oily substance that seemed to come out was really interesting. I'm not sure what that was mixed in here, but I'm going to put this now on a heater and very gently dry it. And we'll take a look then. I'm drying it on top of this light bulb heater here. And it usually takes about half hour, 45 minutes to dry up completely. And then I'll weigh it. These little balls all seem pretty crunchy, so I'm 99% sure it's dry. There we go. Nice. All right, I'm going to grind this into a powder and put it in a small beaker and weigh it. Our final yield of potassium carbonate is 14.83 grams, a little bit lower than I thought it would be by about four grams. However, uh, I do think this product is quite pure and that makes up for a lot. As potassium carbonate is a strong base, strong alkaline solution in water, I'm just going to put a couple crystals right there. Grab our pH paper and stick it in right where those crystals are close to them. And you can clearly see this is very dark and therefore it's a strong base, which we'd expect.